Welcome back to another episode of Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, and your host here on the show. And I'm excited to have you here. If this is your first time on the show, I want to give you a very, very special welcome. Here on the show, we talk about everything real estate investing. We talk about flipping houses like you see on HGTV. We talk about finding deals. We find, uh, we talk about land. We talk about commercial projects. We talk about getting your deals funded without relying on the banks or your credit or your verification of income. We talk about how we average $64,000 per deal in profits. And so if you are remotely interested in learning more about how to be a successful real estate investor without relying on banks and without using your credit or using your money, then you are at the right place. So today I'm so excited to have back with me here on the show, some very, very dear friends and also very, very successful students of mine. And uh, we've been working together now for about three years. They came in my world three years ago. And I just want you all to hear their story. They now, since we started working together, uh, have amassed about $3.75 million in private, excuse me, in profit uh, on their deals. And they've also got about one and a half million dollars in private money that they've raised. They moved from house to house to house to house. And they have just got quite the story that I want to share with all of you, my viewers and listeners. So with that, Welcome to the show, my good friends, Dan and Crystal Muhorter. Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay. Hi. Hello, Dan. Hello, Crystal. Hope y'all are having a fantastic day today. We That's are, it. of course. All right. All right. So just to give everyone uh, y'all's backstory, of course, they, they may have seen you here or heard you here on the show previously. But uh, what was your background, Crystal, before uh, you came into, of course, I know you, you started investing in real estate back in 1996, but when you really, really became serious, serious, serious was probably about four years ago. But uh, what were you doing full time uh, as you were beginning your real estate investing career? I had been an occupational therapist for 26 years. I was in leadership and I was working in gazillion hours. <laughs> That's what yeah. I was doing. How many, how many hours a week were you averaging before um, you fired your day job? Easily 70. There were times that I was on the computer typing up till midnight and would fall asleep. Amazing. Amazing. And there's quite a few people that are tuning into the show that can relate to what you're talking about. Hey, Dan, how about you? I did it. About 21 and a half years in the Navy. Retired from that. Started working as a government contractor. For the Coast Guard, 24-7 support, working about 80 to 85 hours a week. Wow. And let's see here, Crystal. I think you went full-time real estate and let your day job go about nine months after we started working together. That's right. And Dan, I think you went full-time real estate about a year and a half after we started working together. That's all right. Yeah, fantastic. So today, I wanted you all to share with uh, our audience a recent deal that you've done that um, my audience can learn some lessons from. So uh, what we're interested in hearing is how you found the deal, what the numbers look like, uh, what you bought it for, how did you fund the deal, uh, what was your exit strategy, what's your profit on the deal. And any lessons learned uh, from the deal that would be interesting and valuable to the audience. So let's hear about it. Absolutely. We found this property through a yellow letter campaign. So it was a pre-NOD list. So we were looking at individuals that were had not yet received a notice of default, but were certainly determined to be behind on their payments. So anywhere from 30 to 90 days. This individual, based on that mailing, had reached out to us. And we had a conversation and determined that they were in the military, wanted to be able to move on. So they weren't going to be remaining in the property long term anyway. They'd be moving to another state. And they really just wanted to get rid of the headache. So they were strolling with the payment, had roommate issues, had payment issues, had housing issues. So they just wanted to be done. So that was the initiation of our conversation as to what we would do next. We discovered that the property did indeed have a mortgage, obviously. They can't be behind on their payments if they didn't have a mortgage. 
and they owed about 250000 they, we went to the house to take a look and discover that the house really needed very, very minor repairs. And by minor, I mean like ridiculously minor, like fill in a hole in the backyard where the, the roommate's dog had dug a hole, um, fix some paint that somebody had used the wrong color to, to try to touch it up, uh, look at the baseboards and they had some markings from the fact that, you know, wear and tear that minor like crazy minor and so we at that point talked to the seller and i will be honest with you prior to this so this is this is, i'm going to go ahead and toss the lesson in here prior to this i would not have opened my mouth and said hey do you think that you can go through and fix all these minor things because one of the things that we we pride ourselves on is that we're able to purchase it as is no concerns you can just move on but dan looked at him and said you know there's quite a few just little things. What do you think? And he said, well, I can get that taken care of. So moving forward, we made the decision that we would purchase the house subject to the existing mortgage. So we took over the responsibility for payments. We didn't assume the loan or there's no wraparound or anything like that. We just took responsibility for the payments. Mortgage remains in this person's name, deed transferred. And in the process of moving forward with this, they, the HVAC system actually ended up going out. So the young man called me and said, no, I've got some news. It's, it's probably good for you, but not so good for me. And explained to me that the HVAC system had gone out and that someone was coming out and they were replacing it in the next day or two. Again, talk about a win. So there was no discussion of who was going to be responsible for it. He didn't wait until he left the property and then say, oh, I never knew anything about it. Got that taken care of. He, in the meantime, had talked to his parents because we said, well, do you think you can make up any of the payment? We talked to his parents and they felt based on the circumstances that they could help him. So they got the payments made up. So it, when it all was said and done, there were no payments that were behind, absolutely no work whatsoever to do to the home. So we were able to get it marketed before we even had that the, the transition. So where we took possession, we already had identified a potential private, the potential tenant buyer via Facebook. So we do a lot of marketing there. And so we installed the tenant buyer. The cash out price is $329.9. The monthly payment that we were paying out was $1,348 and some odd cents. We were getting $1,875 and our spread was $527 a month on the monthly and our cash out was $79.9 on the overall of the project. Nice, nice. And did I hear at the beginning of the story how you all, oh yeah, you found this by doing a, um, a direct mail campaign to from a list that you had gotten of people that were behind on their payments but the foreclosure process had not started yet, right? That's correct. Perfect. Dan, what lessons from this deal did you all learn? Well, these are all good lessons. The first one really is simply you, you don't know if you don't ask. So again, like Crystal had said, typically we'll go and purchase these properties and we'll just assume all of the repairs and take care of everything for them. But in this situation, I just looked at it and said, you know, you know, all of the baseboards are all scuffed up and there's there's some dog marks on the backs of the doors because they had dogs in there. And some of the doorknobs are really worn off, like the, the polish wore off the doorknobs. And I was just casually mentioning these things and he was taking note of everything. And he just came back with a list and said, I'll take care of all of these. The uh, that was the biggest one right there on that one. This was a this was a pretty, for lack of a better term, easy peasy project for us. Well, and another thing you did, which was brilliant, is, you know, there's, there's a big lesson right here, and that is these people were behind on their mortgage payments, and as a investor, you may think, well, since they're behind, well, there's no way they could get it current, so I'm just going to assume I'm going to have to bring those payments current since I'm buying it subject to the existing note. But something triggered in your mind to ask them, is there any way you can get this current? Tell us more about that. Absolutely. I started to do that 
in, in the more recent past, to be honest, I always made that assumption. Well, they're behind. Needless to say, I have to get it current. So I just started to ask when I would talk to people. And part of that was because I had one person say to me, oh, well, you know, I was going to work on it. This is, was my situation. They had had an issue with their job. They had had some illness. And now they were going to be getting back into work. So they were going to be starting to work on making it up. And so they felt compelled to tell me that that was the place they were coming from. And I thought to myself, well, how silly. I've never, ever said to anybody, well, are you going to be able to make up any of that? Or what's your situation? And why haven't I ever asked? There's no reason not to ask. And so I've discovered over time that when I ask that question, it's surprising the number of people that have a plan in place to at least get started. So they may not be able to complete the process, but we can come somewhere in the middle. We even had somebody that after we took over the existing mortgage, they were they were significantly enough behind it. It was a skinny enough deal that we felt like we needed to say, hey, let's work out a plan. We worked out a plan, a plan with them and they worked on paying us back what we paid into it. So it, it's really about being open and, and asking some of these questions and not making these assumptions. The more that you assume, the less money you're going to make because you're going to just keep giving and throwing away where what we've discovered over time is a lot of these people are willing to help out. It doesn't mean that you're putting them in a bad position. You're just trying to figure out where can we all meet in the middle and help each other out. Well, and you know, I heard the scripting in my mind as you were just telling the story, and that is. I mean, I think a great question to ask would be, well, if we can work it out to where we will buy your house and we'll be responsible for your payments going forward, can you get the, is there any way you can get the payments brought current since I'm willing to take responsibility for ever and ever and ever kind of thing? What's your take on that? Absolutely. So, you know, and I think a lot of like what you were just saying, a lot of that comes out of the conversation that we're having. So where is their, you know, sore point? And a lot of it is that they need to move on. And so it is definitely, you know, assuming that I can, you know, get this all taken care of for you, help you to move on. You have no further headaches associated with this property. I'm going to be taking care of maintenance, taxes, repairs, insurance. Anything that you have been struggling with is now going to be off your plate and on mine. Can we work through something so that you can help get your payments made up so that I can do that for you? How can we work together on that? Yep. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Well, folks, if you would like to meet Dan and Crystal and myself and uh, learn for three days in a row how we do this business, how we find the deals, how we get our deals funded, um, how we sell them quickly. I mean, my land's Dan and Crystal. They just shared how so how, how quick did you say that uh, you found a buyer for this house or did you say? Within the 30 day window that he was exiting and we were taking over possession of the property. That's perfect. But we so often find them within, within a week anymore. Nice. nice. So we have an upcoming live event that uh, if you're remotely interested in learning more about real estate investing, getting your deals funded, how to use these creative strategies, how to find these deals, Check out the website that we put together, and it'll give you all the reasons that you would want to consider to get to the upcoming live event. So here it is, www.jayconner.com forward slash live event. That's J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash live event. Well, Dan and Crystal, thank you so much for coming on the show. Our pleasure. Thank you so much for having us. It's always fun. Thank you. Absolutely. And congratulations on all your success. Well, folks, thank you for tuning in. Uh, again, if you're on uh, iTunes, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review. If you're watching one of the YouTube channels that we have out there, be sure to subscribe to that as well. You can leave your comments and questions below and we'll get all your questions answered. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best and here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. Until the next show, bye for now.